yes okay yeah thank you so much and like yeah it's a very interesting ordering i think um as uh, alex mentioned that we may have a lot of like complementary things um that we can work together on so without further ado uh, let me present you our company uh we're called a form um our our slogan is universal digital wearables and um our company's vision is basically um, like the A form means without form. And we actually believe that digital wearables should not be limited by their form. And we develop intraoperable digital fashion across metaverses and in XR. And what this actually means is, um, so I think um, Pietro like talked most about uh, how you can like simulate uh, like physical clothing in the digital space. But um, we actually are more kind of like more in the digital space. And we think, you know, digital wearables, if they are like completely digital, it's it should actually be able to fit any kind of avatars, any body shape uh, with from just one creation. So uh, we are actually developing the technology that would make universal digital wearables, which can be worn by any kind of avatars, any body shape. Uh, and let me uh, like introduce that a little bit later. Um, so we're a company uh, founded by two founders. So I am Sejun, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Aform. Uh, and my background is actually like, uh, we're, we're also a very deep, deeply technical team. Uh, my background is a PhD in computer science with focus on virtual reality from Carnegie Mellon University. And I'm a ex Google soft, senior software engineer. Uh, I used to work on fashion style recommendation for three years and as well as uh, virtual reality and some augmented reality uh, apps within Google. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, this is actually my second startup. And my co-founder, Mike, he's also from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, he's, uh, he used to work in the uh, traditional finance as in a hedge fund um, as a software engineer. But interestingly, he also has background in fashion tech. Um, he used to be engineer number one at a fashion search engine startup called Jizzle. Um, and we're actually trying to solve this problem in the digital fashion space. I think, you know, from everyone here, everyone's really interested in the potential of the digital fashion. And we also believe that it'll be really big. Um, I think it's projected to become like 50, maybe even like 100 billion market in the next few years. And we actually think there are many roadblocks to getting there. Uh, and so one of them is uh, utility for digital wearables. So I think this might actually be the biggest problem. So when people want to, when creators want to sell the digital wearables, the buyers need to be able to do something with them, right? So they should be able to like wear the digital wearables in like some space, I think in the metaverse on the avatars that they want to, or use it in an AR setting, like wear it themselves. But I think enabling that utility uh, actually has a lot of blockers. And because um, there is a lot of difficulty in creating alternate versions. Um, so supporting uh, wearables in different art styles can require recreating it from scratch. And there's the ecosystem is also very fragmented. There's a lot of blockchains and metaverses out there, all with different requirements. And you know the creators need to basically learn each requirement, um, adhere to all the technical um, uh, like uh, requirements and like you know just do it themselves right and like last last but not least all of this is very very labor intensive and um, most of this process that I described right now is done manually uh, and this is exactly the problem that we're trying to solve we want to help the digital fashion like market just take off and we want to be we want to build the tech that enables all of this so we basically are trying to enable utility for digital fashion through our technology. And let me dive a little bit deeper into our technology now. So the tech stack um, that we have uh, is kind of overviewed, like there's a diagram for this right here. Uh, so the input to our system is basically the, the 3D wearable itself. Um, it could come in an NFT format or it could just be like a 3D file, uh, as well as the avatar that we're trying to fit these digital garments on. And through our automated conversion technology, we would resize uh, and also fit it on the avatars. We do graphic style conversion. Um, so for, for example, like there's different like graphic styles such as like voxelized version for the sandbox. Uh, and, and then we also need to optimize the assets so that they can be uh, dynamically loaded into these different metaverses where there might be like hundreds of other users as well. So. Uh, we can't have uh, like really high polygon meshes for every single person. So we may need to optimize them. 
And after we do these conversions, we are planning to let the fashion designer um, review the results and also when they approve them, export them in the right format for the different um, metaverse uh, to use. Uh, and actually, I think it's very interesting that, uh, you know, Deep Gears mentioned uh, the sandbox game because we actually already built something that does this. So maybe we can work together on this. So the tech demo we have today, uh, we actually uh, got the 3D uh, jacket, a 3D file uh, for the jacket from our one of our partner companies called Fame. They'll be speaking later today as well. Uh, and this jacket has actually been automatically converted into a voxel format. And we actually um, have uh, NDAs with the sandbox game to get their proprietary file format so that we can directly integrate into their system. Uh, like this is the, the screen you see on the bottom right is from their software called Fox Edit, which is their voxel editing software. And as you can see, the jacket like moves seamlessly with the avatar from the sandbox game. Uh, and like the voxel technology is not just limited to the sandbox. Um, there are other voxel metaverses out there as well. So one of the like other use cases we're considering is for crypto voxels, which is another uh, voxelized meta metaverse. But interestingly, they actually don't have a specific size limit for their like resolution limit for their avatar system. So you can actually have as many voxels as you want uh, for a single garment. So we can actually you know do the jacket in a higher resolution voxel. So this is actually a voxel, and um, you can see that it looks uh, almost like the real thing. So uh, you can have this kind of uh, voxelized uh, like wearables also in crypto voxels. And um, in our future roadmap, uh, we also plan to support non-voxel metaverses. So uh, like, as, as I mentioned, the technology that we're building is when, like for the any like 3D, like uh, digital wearable, that's uh, if we had the 3D file for them and the target avatar will be able to resize, refit, automatically optimize them and like convert the graphic style uh, to fit them onto di these different uh, avatars. And I, I also think it's very interesting that um, like Ready Player Me was mentioned because I was going to show you this uh, sneaker peek of our technology um, that we're building for the Ready Player Me avatar. Uh, this is for the automated shoe fitting. So here on the left, you can see uh, the Ready Player Me avatar with the original shoes. Um, and uh, in, in the middle, we actually have, so we downloaded um, a few different shoes um, just from like Sketchfab, which is an online 3D, uh, like 3D object marketplace. And we just grabbed random shoes and they are not definitely not built for the Ready Player Me avatars. And what, like the one in the middle, like the original shoe was actually like very small, like too small for the Ready Player Me avatar. Through our automated conversion technology, we were able to fit them onto the Ready Player Me avatar. Uh, on the very right, uh, this is a, like a 3D file, 3D shoe model that was too big for the Ready Player Me avatar. We were also able to do this. Uh, and actually, all of this is automatic. We just had to download the 3D uh, model for the shoe. And we just, um, like knowing that it's a shoe, we just input it to our system. We can automatically uh, resize and fit it onto the avatar. And um, let me like tell you about some benefits of using our technology. So for the fashion designers, we actually want to enable them to focus like solely on fashion design and not worry, have, like not have to worry about technicalities of metaverse interoperability. I, we believe, you know, fashion designers, what they really love and like really good at is designing, you know, fashionable clothing for the people. And they shouldn't have to like be blocked by all of these technical requirements that are set up by all the different avatar formats, all the different, um, you know, optimizations that they may have to do for different metaverses and also for the buyer side um like to enable this digital fashion economy we actually believe we should um enable them to confidently purchase digital wearables knowing that these will be usable wherever and like however they want to use them so uh our current partnerships we are actually uh we have two partners uh one of them being fame uh like i mentioned they'll be speaking giving a talk later today uh fame is a fashion digital fashion launchpad uh for like they have partnerships with uh like many like uh prominent fashion designers from korea and um we are working with them to uh we're we're partnering with them to onboard many many different fashion designers and i think a lot of uh, other companies here are in a similar position as them and we would love to work together 
And on the right, we have Bizarre Labs. They're actually creating a, a easy to use fashion design tool for uh, normal people who may not be fashion designers. They are striving to be the Canva of digital fashion. And um, we, we also are trying to uh, look into onboarding uh, creations from their users uh, and like exporting them to various metaverses. Uh, currently, we're like actively looking for additional partnerships as well as investments. So please um, do reach out to us, and we would love to chat with all of you. And um, yeah, there it is. Um, so this is our contact information. I'll also like make sure to uh, put them in the chat. And um, yeah, I think we can move to the Q and A sessions. <laughs> 